Hello everyone, I am Erika of the storytellingjeweler.com. I am your guest teacher here in May in the Seed Beads and More group, and we will be learning the basics of bead embroidery together. Today is our first lesson, and I will show you how to attach the coin to the beading foundation. Let's get started. First, I am going to draw a grid on my beading foundation, the Ultra Suede. I know that I would like to make a pendant and I don't want it to be bigger than seven uh, centimeters. So what I'm going to do that with my ruler and my gel pen, I'm drawing a square on the Ultra Suede, leaving about one centimeter all around. I drew the first side of the square and I'm going to mark the middle of all the sides so I can connect them later. This grid will keep you, uh, will help you keep centered and also if you would like to make an asymmetrical motif then for example it makes it really easy to uh, arrange beads, for example, in a perfect 45 degree angle. Uh, with a simple motif like the Traveler, it's not that necessary, it's not absolutely necessary to draw this grid, but when in the future you are going to bead some more complicated shapes, then it will really be useful to have this grid. When I after I drew the square, I'm going to connect the middle, the points in the middle of the sides, like this, and this, and I'm also connecting the tips of the square diagonally. Corners, sorry, that's the right word. The corners of the square diagonally. So here it is. The color of the gel pen, it's not that important. It should be something similar, but still like stand out so you can clearly see the lines. Uh, however, with this shape, I am uh, going to completely cover the surface with beads, so don't worry too much about the color of your gel pen. I cut out the square, the grid, from the Ultra Suede, leaving about one centimeter all around. Uh, this extra space is important because if I want to go really big, I don't know exactly yet that how uh, will my design look like. With the bead embroidery, I'm always kind of improvising. Uh, but in case that I want to go really big and embroider all, around, uh, all until the edges of the square, then it will be a lot easier if I have this extra piece of ultra suede all around. It's nice to have a different pair of scissors when you are cutting fabrics because uh, if you use the same pair of scissors for fabric and something else, for example fire line and paper, then fire line and paper uh, tend to dull the blades of the scissors. So it's nice to have an extra just for cutting fabric. So the beading foundation is ready and now I will glue my coin, the one Turkish lira I chose, in the middle of the Ultra Suede. I will apply an even layer of glue on the back side of the coin, the precision tip of the F F6000 makes it really easy. 
if you don't have a clove-it precision tip, then it's also nice to, it's also possible to work with a toothpick. So don't worry. You can, for example, use E6000 in combination with a toothpick. And now I am carefully placing the lira in the middle of my ultra suede. The grid is already handy, isn't it? I will wait for a couple of minutes before I start working. I prepared my beads, thread and needle while waiting for the glue to dry. So for the needle, I like to use tulip needles, uh, number 12 and number 10. For this part, I, would, I will use a number 12 tulip needle. And my favorite beading thread is Fireline, the 0.12 millimeter thickness or 4LB, 0.005 inch in average. Uh, I will use, for my embroidery, I will use double thread. It's not absolutely necessary. If you don't like to work with double thread, then you can also uh, go with simple thread. Just tie a knot at the end. I tied the tail and the working end of the thread together, and I left only about a couple of millimeters as a tail. You don't need any tail here. Uh, just leave the part which is like unavoidable. Uh, you will need for this part Miyuki Delica 11 beads or Toho Treasure 11 beads and with the, in the combination of round seed beads in number 15. First, we are going to attach a row of beads, Delica beads, all around the coin. By the way, this kind of uh, bezeling, the focal component, it works perfectly well with all kinds of flatback cabochons. It does not have to be a coin. So if you, if you will work with, uh, for example, a check cabochon in the future, which has a flatback or a semi-precious stone, then you can use the same method. Now, I'm uh, beading through the foundation from the back to the front in about like half a millimeter from the edge of the coin, not directly at the edge. I pull the thread through and I pick up four pieces of Miyuki Delica beads. I arrange them exactly where I want them to be and then I bead down through the foundation. By the way, one more thing about the thread length. There is no correct or wrong thread length for embroidery, well, specifically for this design, because uh, you will anyway need to connect at least two times, I think, some new thread. So more important is, I think, to work with a comfortable length. Now, after the four beads, I went down through the foundation and I will come up again between the second and the third. This part requires a little bit of practice to be precise and to work fast or faster. At first, you will be looking a bit for the correct position, but believe me, it will not take a long time. After coming up between the second and the third bead, I also bead it through the third and the fourth bead again. So now these four Delica beads are attached to the foundation. Basically, this is what I will be repeating all around the coin. I pick up four Delica beads. I arrange them to sit where they belong. I bead down through the foundation after the fourth bead. I bead up again between the second and the third. And then I bead through the third and fourth bead. 
And now I will pick up a group of four again and repeat and repeat. I have a little trick for the end of the this first circle, which I will show you in a little while. For now, just please keep picking up four beads, go down through the foundation, come up again between the second and the uh, third, then bead through the third and fourth bead. Um, in the past, when I was working on a big bead embroidered piece for a competition and I was under like serious time pressure, then I experimented with like picking up six beads at the time to make it faster. But believe me, it's not worth it because the beads will be loose and the result will just not be what you expected it to be. So now keep attaching the groups of four and come back to me, pause the video and come back to me when you have a gap for about the last four pieces of Miyuki Delica beads. I'm at the point that I have a gap for the last group of beads and here I like to do a little trick. I pick up my four Delica beads and then instead of beading down through the foundation right away, I like to go through the first Delica bead, bead which I attached at the beginning of this step to connect the two groups. I had a little loop of this thread there. What's happening? Okay, now it's now it's all right. And I bead down through the foundation after this delica bead. I come up again, as usual, between the second and the third, and then. I bead through the third and fourth and I will also continue through a couple of more Delica beads. So this is how it looks like. I have an even circle of Miyuki Delica 11 beads all around my coin. Um, unfortunately, the fire line left some marks on the Ultra Suede as I have at the moment only smoke grey fire line, not the black satin. but Again, since the Ultra Suede will be fully covered with the beads, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. One more thing, always try to, try to go for an even number of beads around the coin or around your cabochon in the future. It makes it easier to uh, bezel, to actually build up your bezel around the coin. You will find it very easy if you have ever bezeled a cabochon with peyote stitch. If not, then I would really recommend to download my free forget-me-not tutorial. I will post a link uh, below the video uh, I uh, and uh, give it a try, give it a go before you proceed. Uh, if you have ever done it, then you will find this part very easy. It's also uh, possible to bezel the, uh, the focal, to build up the bezel, if you have an odd number at this point, but we will go with the even, even number. So when you are attaching the last group of Delicas, then aim for, aim for an even number. Already when you are attaching actually the last two groups, then you can, you can arrange the beads in a way. So they, uh, so you will have an even number. And it's always nicer if you don't push the beads. So if there is a little, and uh, the last gap is a little bit tinier than what you would need, then don't, don't push in the beads. Rather uh, undo the last one or two groups of Delicas and um, 
try to pull the beads a little bit closer together, but still like nicely arranged instead of like pushing in that last last delica bead. Mm, unfortunately, I had quite a few traveler necklaces and brooches which were ruined because I tried to fit in, try to push in a bead either in the bezel or later during during the decorations. I will build up now the second row of the bezel. To do so, I pick up a Miyuki Delica bead and I skip the first Delica in this first circle after the exit point of my thread and I bead through the second Delica. I'll, I pull my thread tight and I arrange the beads in a nice way. So this second Delica should be directly above the first one instead of being next to it like this. See, I just flip it with my fingernail. And now I pick up another Delica. I skip the first Delica in this base circle after the exit point and I bead through the second one. I pull the thread tight and again, if needed, I arrange the bead in a nice way. This is exactly the same method as you are working when you are bezeling a Rivoli, for example, with peyote stitch. Always adding one bead after another, skipping one in the base circle and going through the second one. And this is how you will work your way all the way around the coin. I will show a little trick at the end. You will be familiar with it if you have ever done a peyote bezel. So keep adding the beads please and make sure that they are positioned well. I am at the point where I will be adding the last Miyuki Delica bead. So as you see, as usually, I skip the first bead after the exit point. I already picked up my new Delica. I skip the first Delica after my exit point. I bead through the second one. And diagonally, I also bead through the first Delica added in this step. So instead of one, I will cross through two beads. When I pull my thread, again, I arrange this new bead so it it stands in a nice way. This trick at the end of this step is called stepping up and it's necessary to do it, do this uh, before before starting to add beads in the next row. And now you see that the beads look kind of like a zip and there are gaps between the beads added in this last part. And what I'm going to do is, this is going to be very easy. I am going to add Delica beads into the gaps. So I picked up a new bead and then I bead through the next Delica added in the previous step. At this point, actually, you will need to decide if you need to add one more row of Miyuki Delica 11s or if you need to switch already to the smaller ones, to the round 15 beads. It also requires a bit of experimenting, a bit of playing. And yeah, you will just need to get a bit, a bit uh, comfortable with this and then you will kind of like see that if you need one more row of Delica or not. What's important that the mm, new beads, they should not deform the bezel. So when you pull the thread, when I pull the thread, then the edge of the bezel is already kind of like angling over the coin but the beads are still like nicely one next to each other and the whole bezel looks nicely, nice and neat. 
So, I will go around while adding Miyuki Delica 11 beads and I will again step up at the end of the row. So, let's meet you there. I finished adding one more row of Miyuki Delica beads and I stepped up when adding after adding the last Miyuki. You see I'm exiting actually a Delica which I added in this last step. Now I definitely need to switch to the Miyuki round 15s. The bezel, it already, when I pull the thread, then I see that it already starts to curve over, over the coin. And if I continued adding Miyuki Delica beads, then the bezel would be too tall and it would not, not uh, follow the line, the lines of the of the coin. So now I actually will do the same that I pick up a new bead, this time a number 15 round Miyuki and I add it to the gap between two beads added in the previous step. And again and again. This is the way how I will go all around the motif, adding Miyuki round 15s into the gap, into the gaps. I pull my thread tight to shape the bezel nicely. And let's meet you when I went all around the motif, adding the Miyuki 15s. I am adding now the last piece of Miyuki 15. So, just as before, I am exiting a Miyuki Delica 11. I picked up this last piece of number 15 and I bead through the next Miyuki Delica from the previous row. And now at this point I will need to decide if I want to add one more row of Miyuki 15 or not. You can, if you decide to uh, go with one more row, then you just do the same. You step up and then you fill the gaps with Miyuki number 15s. However, I think that with my coin, it looks better if I uh, stop after adding one row of Miyuki 15s. I think the texture of the coin and also this nice golden edge of the coin it's, it's just nicer if I leave it at one row of Miyuki 15s. Uh, you, of course, need to examine it a little bit if, if the coin sits in the bezel tight, tightly. I see that with my coin there is like no way that it, it could be like that, I, that it would in any way fall out in the very, very unprobable case that the glue just wasn't holding up, so I can stop after adding one row of Miyuki 15s. To finish off the bezel, instead of stepping up, I will go diagonally through three more Miyuki Delica beads, all the way to the foundation, the beading foundation, and I will actually also bead through the ultra suede. I pull my thread and now I'm exiting the ultra suede on the back side. Just for some added security, I tie a double knot and another one. So, here it is, 
the peyote bezel around the coin is done. And this is where we will continue next time. Next time I will show you how to add the cup chain, all kinds of fire polished beads and pearls around your coin. I will show you different stitches. So until then you can maybe practice if you want to make more more coins, more motifs than you can you can do, you can bead more. And also please start playing with your cup chains and all the other components what you have uh, you have uh, collected. Just uh, get some ideas that what should be the order. How do you want them to be arranged around your coin? I will also make a PDF file to help you through the learning process. It will support this video. It can be used on its own too. Uh, but as everyone has a different way of learning, then you might uh, feel uh, better with the video, you might feel better with the PDF, the printable PDF. So I just want to give you some options. So thank you very much for being with me today. And please don't hesitate. If you have any, any, any questions to ask, I will be around to answer everything and to help you with your, with your traveler design. Thank you very much. Wishing you a nice day. Bye bye.